keep that on our lips because that's the will of God. Yeah. You know, prosperity is the will of God. Yeah. How, devil, how the devil's people going to have all the money? Huh? How's that going to be possible? Huh? I rebuke that in Jesus' name. You know, a lot of saints feel like if they're not struggling, they're not in God. Who did that? Who preached that sermon? Boy, that boy better repent. Let that thing go through the church and, you know, suffer something. You know, if any man, you know, the Bible says if any, uh, if any man lives godly in Christ Jesus, you will suffer persecution. Okay? But that, that, that don't mean, you know, you don't have no clothes. You, don't, you got a shotgun house next to the, the railroad and when the train go by, you know, you hear your shingles flapping. That's not what that means. Amen. We know the enemy comes against us, but greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Amen. God is not the author of, of, of poverty and sickness and disease. You know, people come up there, I'm sick for Jesus. No, you sick because you sick. You're not sick for Jesus. You sick because you, you got some bad doctrine flow. You know, and I've heard it before. You know. But uh, Jesus rose, and we rose with him. Amen. Amen. And it's getting better for all of us. Amen. It's getting better. Getting, better. It's getting easier. Yes. It's getting lighter. Yes. And we're getting stronger. Yes. And we're passing that thing on to our children. Yes. Amen. And they're getting better. Yes. Amen. It's getting easier for them. Yes. Getting lighter. Amen. Yes. Glory to God. Amen. That's the way God would have it. Yes. You know, one generation praises him. To the next generation, amen. And, and and we all see the goodness of his mighty hand. Amen. amen. Well, uh, uh let's get right into the, the, the message today. And um we've been talking about overcoming trouble or or you know coming into your healing, you know, wh whatever the trouble is, uh whether it's financial trouble, whether it's um uh sickness in your body. You know, whether it's a um, uh, a breach in your uh, relationship, we said that God wants us well, and he wants us to experience uh, victory, and it is his will that you come out of trouble. Now, one of the, um, one of the characteristics of true Christianity is that you overcome. You, 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 you understand the ramifications of overcoming. Amen. Trouble might come, but it's not to overcome. Yeah. Somebody say amen to that. And, and, and God has his part, and we have our part. Amen. So we said the first thing when you're in trouble, the first thing you do, uh, anyone want to give me that first, uh, the first point we had? What was the first one? Of the Thank you. Uh, uh, inquiring of the Lord. Amen. Somebody listen. He <laughs> said, we inquire of the Lord. Amen. We, we go to God first. And then we gave two little illustrations. We gave David inquired of the Lord. And uh, he got back everything that was stolen. Remember, the, the women and children had been kidnapped. And the camp had been set on fire. And by the Amalekites, and David inquired of the Lord, and David said, should I pursue uh, this troop, and, and, and shall I overtake them? And the Lord told David, you shall pursue this troop, and without failure, you will recover all. Yeah. And then we had Asa. Uh, he was the king uh, at one time, and uh, the word of God says he got diseased in his feet, but he never inquired of the Lord. He never sought the Lord. All he did was uh, he, he sought the doctors, but he never sought the Lord. And the word of the Lord says he died because he never sought the Lord. So he said in trouble, uh, you, 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 you could sought the Lord first. I don't care how good your doctor is, how good your lawyer is. Amen. And I don't know about you, but uh, I tell my lawyer what we're going to do. I took notes from OJ. <laughs> Why are you looking at me like that? 
Yeah, he told them what y'all would be going to do. I mean, so, I mean, some of you feel like, well, you, you, you're professionals too. You got sense. You know, you don't, you know, you, if you hire somebody, a lawyer or somebody like that, and you wait too long, you know, or they, they dragging their feet, you, that, that, that's your cue. Because they work for you. I mean, you feel like, oh, Mr. Lawyer, no, no. They work for you, and they're supposed to do what you say. And if they can't do that, you better move on and find some other help. Right. Amen? So, uh, uh, you know, you, you, you don't seek uh, in the natural first. You seek the Lord. Amen? Get your marching orders from the Lord. And then we said, um, uh, do not allow the voice of condemnation and guilt to uh, sway your, uh, attack your faith and, and come against your faith. Yeah. You know, sometimes we're in trouble because it's self-induced right. and sometimes we're in trouble because the enemy has just come against us. Yeah. But either way, God wants to deliver you. Yeah. You know, God is a loving father. God is a, yeah. he is a, compassionate, merciful, yes. gracious oh God. He doesn't say, oh, look at you. Uh, see, I told you not to go. You went there, and you're on your own. You make your bed hard, you're laying it. That ain't God. That's your Aunt Lucy. From Kalamazoo. That's not God. God don't say, you made your bed hard, you lay in it. God don't say that. God says, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Yeah. God said, I'm going to give you double for your trouble and beauty for your ashes. Yeah. He said, I'm going to put the garments of praise on you for the days of depression and oppression and heaviness. Yeah. The days that you felt like you were losing your mind because everything around you was unstable yeah. and didn't look right. God said, I'm going to give you double for your trouble. I'm not going to, I'm not going to assist you in your affliction. Yeah. Come on, saints, you might have to get better than this. You know, we tell another saint, you know, what would happen? Well, you know, you, you was doing this and doing that and sipping and dipping and being cool and acting like a fool. Now look at you. <laughs> That's not counsel. <laughs> David said, I waited patiently for the Lord. And he inclined his ear unto me. And he heard my cry. And he said, and he brought me up out of a horrible pit. Out of the miry clay, the miry clay, that's quicksand. You know, quicksand, the more you fight, the, 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 the further down you go. And David said, he brought me out of that, that horrible pit, even the, the quicksand, and then he, he set my feet upon a rock, and he established my goings, and he put a new song in my heart, even praise unto Almighty God. And then he says, many saw it, and trust in the Lord. Yeah. You know there's somebody who's looking at you who wants you to come out because if you come out, they're going to believe they can come out. Yeah. Yeah. And they might harass you about going to church and they might talk, you talk about you, but, but deep down inside, they want you to come out. Yeah. Because if you can come out yeah. working at the same job, yeah. if you can come out with the same occupation, yeah. if you then they get hope to come out. Yeah. And God wants you out. He wants you to testify of his goodness. Yeah. He wants you to testify on how good he is. He wants to, you to testify how you were broke, but then he brought you into the land of increase. Amen. You were in the wilderness wandering, and, and you, you, you had more months at the end of the money, and, and you, you, you was working two jobs just to way of God. Amen. That's the way of God. Amen. That's the way of God. And that's the people of God. Amen. Amen. Trouble comes, but it doesn't overcome. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And we see his goodness. So we said number two, do not allow 
the voice of guilt and condemnation. Whether it's self-induced or whether the devil came against you, God still wants you on top. Yeah. He wants you to be the head and not the tail. Yeah. He wants you to be above only and not beneath. Yeah. He wants you to lend and not have to borrow. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Because his mercy and his goodness endures forever. Amen? Amen. Amen. And then we said, don't let your emotions uh, take you out of your victory. You know, um, I notice the older I get now, the more impatient I get. I know it's supposed to be the other way. But for me, I'm, 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 you know, it, I don't know what happened, but it's not like this. The, uh, we, went to, we went through to get coffee this morning, and it seemed like I was with the slowest guy. And, and my daughter says, what is he ordering? I said, I really don't know. How much breakfast can you get? And I was this close to my horn. I was like, yeah. <laughs> what are they ordering? <laughs> and so, you know, you, you know, we said that your emotions are a reflection of what you're thinking. So if you don't want your emotions to be crazy, you got to think different. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. So I said, well, let's just praise the Lord. <laughs> I mean, no, 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 it, it wasn't a deep praise like we was up here because I didn't have, you know, Bishop Smith. I didn't have, the, I didn't have the band with me, so you know, it was, it was, that was hallelujah, hallelujah. But, you know, at least it kept my hand off the horn. You know, so, hurry up! So we said, in the time of trouble, you will be conflicted. Your your emotions can go crazy. And we said that the things that are lovely, the things that are pure, the things that are full of virtue, amen, of a good report, the things that are worthy of praise, amen, in the time of trouble, amen, massage your mind on those things, amen, because victory is soon to come. And so today we, we want to look at, that was just a review, today we want to look at, um, Where's the clock? Okay. Okay. I think we want to stop before the clock. I stopped. I made it last week. Yeah, you did. I made it last week. <laughs> so y'all don't have act when I stop early. <laughs> what are we doing now? You just be sitting here. <laughs> but uh, today we want to look at uh, when you're coming out of trouble, you 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 need to develop an understanding that. God's not going to let you fail. Amen. God's not going to let you fail. See, you're in this thing with God. The Apostle Paul said we are co-laborers together with him. And, uh, you know, it, it, it might be uh, a season of heaviness. It might be a season of sickness. But remember, God will not let you fail. Now, um, <clears throat> I'm big on this. Now, I grew up in a church that said, if it be the Lord's will, you get healed. I preach, along with many others, that it is the Lord's will. Healing belongs to you. Now, that might just sound like, well, you know, apples and No, no, no. It's a big thing if you feel like if God heals you, You'll be healed. Versus he has already healed you. It's his will to heal you. And so now his will is his word. And you try to read your Bible every day. And, and, and get your soul, get your mind in agreement with it's God's will to heal me. Even though it looks dark. Are you here? That's a big difference. Come on. Pain going through your body. The doctors gonna give you a, a very dismal report. And you're sitting there on your bed. Lord, if it's your will, you'll heal me. Versus, Lord, I know it's your will. I know you said you'll never leave me nor forsake me. You said that I can boldly say, you are my helper. 
And so, even in your darkest hours, you say to yourself, Lord, you're my helper. Lord, you're my strength. You're, you're my light and you're my salvation. I will not fear. You are the strength of my life. And your strength is making me better even right now. Now, that's a, that's a, that's a paradox there. That, that's two different thought processes. One says, God will not fail me. The other one says, if it's his will, he'll get me up. It's God's will. So get, 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 get on up. James Brown, get away from this point. Get on up. It's God's will. Amen. Let yourself know it's God's will. Let your family know it's God's will. Amen. Uh, the Terminator said, I'll be back. <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger, I'll be back. You know, let them know you'll be back. Yeah. Amen. Amen. It's not under death. It's not over. It's not over until God says it's over. Amen. And He don't say it's over until you win. Yeah. He's with you all the way. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So uh, it says in Psalms thirty-four twenty-two, the Lord redeems the soul of His servants. And none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. Deuteronomy 31, 6 through 8. Be strong and of a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he is. For the Lord thy God, he is, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. And Moses called unto Joshua and said unto him in the sight of all Israel, Be strong and of a good courage, for thou must go with this people unto the land which the Lord hath sworn unto their fathers to give them, and thou shalt cause them to inherit it. And the Lord, he it is that doth go before thee, he shall be with thee. He will not fail thee, neither forsake thee. Fear not neither be dismayed. Amen? Amen? He said, he told Joshua, let the people know I'm not going to fail. Amen. Let, let them know that, that they're going to see some strength. And remember, God promised his people that in a few days, they were going to literally go from rags to riches. I need you to hear me now. They, they, they've been in slavery over 430 years. And then all these plagues are coming in the land of Egypt. The Bible says frogs just pop up everywhere. You know, you go to bed. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> frogs everywhere. Then lice. Then, I mean, every kind of plague. And then finally it's the last plague. The death of the firstborn. And, and, and it says, not only of man, but of beasts. The death angel comes through Egypt because God's people were to be emancipated. They were to go free. And so uh, the church in the wilderness uh, goes free. They are emancipated as God allows uh, uh, the darkness to get on Egypt and uh, the word of God says that in Goshen, where the people of God say it was light. So all these uh, plagues were going on in Egypt, but where the people of God were, it was light. Now, it, it, it's, it's interesting how even though they've been slaves for over 400 years, it says before they left that God made the Egyptians pay them back for over 400 years of no pay. You know, slaves, you don't get no pay. Right. Ain't no Friday. Ain't no Thursday. Ain't no payday. You work for free. But it says in the word of God, he let them out with silver and gold, and there was not one feeble person amongst their tribe. That's incredible. That's absolutely incredible. It says, he led them out. He brought them forth. Also, Psalms 105, 37. He brought them forth also 
with silver and gold, and there was not one feeble person among their tribes. Now this is amazing. Yeah. After 430 years, you ain't going to the doctors. You get sick, you get well, or you die. The master ain't paying for no doctor for you. Huh? But it says God's hand moved. And he brought them out with silver and gold. Now, why would he give them money? Because he's trying to get their self-esteem, their self-worth. They've never had anything. They've been called everything but a child of God. And But before they leave, God makes sure that a supernatural recompense comes. And for the first time, they putting on. Huh? <coughs> well, somebody done got on a Rolex. <laughs> Can't even stuff, but you got it on. <laughs> ah, somebody got, you know, all these sophisticated things. It, it says in the Word of God, He put gold on them, He put jewels on them, He put bandanas on, on the women. And it says uh, that. that they were lavished. They were lavished in the goodness of God. And, and, and they were going to a land that flowed with milk and honey. That represents abundance and wealth and consistent increase. And well, you know the story. They, they got out of Egypt, but they couldn't get the Egypt out of them. And so, an 11 day journey took them 40 years. They, they, they couldn't fully comprehend that they were supposed to be in a place of opulence and uh, luxury and Increase and blessed that they had been without so long, yeah. even though they were loaded down with the with the precious jewels of Egypt. It didn't mean that much to them because they never had. It. You know, sometimes we see uh, uh, these kids walking around and they done made it big and they got gold all on them. I ain't mad at them. They never had. It. I mean, it's easy to say, what you doing with all that? I never had it. Yeah. Gold on their feet, gold on their ankles, gold on their legs, gold on their everywhere. Five or six earrings over here, the earrings over here, they didn't know. <laughs> but you know, when you never had you know, some people never had it. Yeah. So when they get it, they might go a little crazy. Yeah, yeah. But I'd rather have it and go a little crazy than not have it. I never forget it. I, I, had a, I had a business uh, meeting with a guy. I knew he was a millionaire. I knew he owned these huge apartments. I knew he was a multi-millionaire. So, you know, I, uh, I'm i all dressed and my car is all shined up. I got a suit on. He meets me in a beat-up Honda. He had to get out the passenger side because his side wouldn't work. He had a pair of shorts on and I'm um, Looked like he put tar on the tennis. I'm like, what? I'm like, look at this. I'm way overdressed. <laughs> and uh, we're going over this real estate, and he says uh, what he's going to do. And uh, uh, he was a nice guy. You know, he gave, gave me a big break. But I thought to myself, you know, all this money this man got, he show up like this. You know? But you know, he, he let me know. He, I, he knew I was looking at it. He said, Oh, yeah, I'm building a mansion in Greece. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. I guess he, you know, he, he, he you know, I, I'm looking at him like, <laughs> Are you the one or do we look for another? <laughs> He's looking crazy. He said, I'm building a mansion in Greece. I send most of my money back home. He said, I said, Okay, well, okay. I guess he got the signal. You know, I'm looking at him like, Are you? Are you the guy? <laughs> but I said all that to say that when you never had it, and when you've been on the bottom, sometimes even when you hear good news, 
it might sound too good to be true. Yep. Yep. I preach prosperity in churches and people got mad at me. Jesus. Who he think he is? Yep. That's why he's in the word. He's in the word. God don't want you broke. Yep. You know, you, you, a whole lot of atrocities have happened when people are in poverty. You and I know people have done way, way things they swore they would never do. When the baby didn't have any any any, any food, and when 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 the rent was due, and they were going to be put out. And God doesn't want us. He doesn't want us lacking, but He wants us to increase His way. There's a way you increase, and it's by the Word of God. Amen. Amen. It's by the will of God. Amen. Amen. It's exalting God in his word. It's putting him first place in your life. It's putting his word in your heart. And then you're being led by the spirit. The spirit and the word agree. Uh -huh. You know, some people have been in church all their life, but they still not led. Right. They, they think, you know, they, they're going to get points just, you know, for coming to church. No. Coming to church is like going to school. You don't pass because you're there. Yeah. <laughs> don't do no homework. Don't pass no test. Hey, huh? Come on. But the only thing, God is not the, like the public school system. You just be 60 in kindergarten. <laughs> <laughs> he ain't passing you by and passing you by and pass. you 60 in kindergarten. <laughs> That's why they fussing and they cussing before they get to the lobby. Still in kindergarten. Come out of school. You got to grow in grace. Yes. You got to grow in God. Yes. You got to get in the word. Hallelujah. You got to put it first place. You got to esteem his word more than your necessary food. You got to want to go forward. Angel looking at you said, I ain't been on assignment since the girl was born. <laughs> Came alongside her mother, made sure the delivery, but really she ain't getting nothing since. <laughs> See, some people think, you know, because you go to church, you, you don't get this because you go to church. You get it because you do your homework, and, then, and you get in it, and you get in it, and it yeah. gets in you, and it gets in you, yeah. and you get in it, and it gets in you, and yeah. then the Holy Spirit. And you become like a palm tree in a yeah. time of trouble. You might bend, but you won't break. Yeah. You might go all the way down. Yeah. People see you and think you're there. I'm like, hey, yeah. you coming back up? Because you're going to die. And he will not fail you. Yeah. He's going to make sure you come up. Yeah. In spite of your enemy. Yeah. In spite of those who, who've been trying to sabotage yeah. your way. Nobody can sabotage your, your destiny if you don't let it. That's right. You belong to God. You can vote to God. He calls you his daughter. He calls you his son. Yes. Joshua 1 and 5. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Can we see that again. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. God says we're in this together. God says hey, you might you might be at the bottom right now, but I'm gonna bring you to the top. That's right. Did you know Caleb was not even an Israelite? Caleb was just on the bottom. He was just on the bottom of the food chain, and he heard that the death angel was coming. I believe he got in one of those houses with the with the people of God. Had the blood up on the door. Amen. And he was spared. But you know what Caleb said at 80 years old? He said after all of those trials and tribulations in the wilderness, he said he was 40 when he left Egypt, and now he was 80. He said, give me my mountain. What he was saying is, I want that I want to go into the land that's flowing with milk and honey. I want what's mine. I've been poor all my life. And God said, I got a payday. He said, I'm as strong at 80 hmm. as I was at 40. Jesus. He said, I'm going to get mine. Come on. And the Bible 
Bible says Joshua and Caleb, they were the only two out of that generation that went into the promised land. It says because they had a different spirit. Yes. They had a spirit of Ooh. faith. They had a spirit to believe God in spite of what they saw, in spite of what they felt, in spite of what they heard. You know, sometimes you have to, you have to belittle what you see, what you feel, what you hear, so that the will of God can be done. Amen. Or you'll be sitting in the chair, you know, uh, uh, somewhere, you know, just, just depressed. Yeah. Telling yourself how bad it is. Yeah. Amen. But God has better for you. He has better for you. Joshua 21, 45. There failed not aught of anything which the Lord has spoken unto the house of Israel. All came to pass. Everything that God told them was going to happen, it happened. Now, for the most part, another generation went in. Because that one generation, they came out of Egypt, but they never could get to Egypt out of them. Soon as something happened, oh, the Lord brought us out here to kill us, huh? With the God, we were back in Egypt. Now, nah, you, you was getting beat. You, you was at the bottom, and, and, and now you're, you're in the wilderness. At least you're free. But they said, no. What, wish we were back in Egypt. With, we was eating onions and garlic and leeks. You know, they wanted, they wanted the menu of Egypt. Amen. They could never comprehend, they could never get it in their minds that God had better for them. Because every time they ran in tr into trouble, they, they, they exalted the trouble over the word of the Lord. You know, don't exalt your trouble over the promise of God. Amen. Sickness come, God said you be well. So say I'm healed, even when you're in pain. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. that's good. Yeah. That's good. 1 Kings 8.56 Blessed be the Lord that hath given rest unto his people Israel according to, according to all that he promised. There hath not failed one word of all his good promise which he promised by the hand of Moses his servant. 1 Chronicles 28 and 20 and David said to Solomon his son, Be strong and do, be strong and of good courage and do it. Fear not, nor be dismayed, for the Lord God, even my God, will be with thee. He will not fail thee nor forsake thee until you have finished all the work for the service of the house of the Lord. So, so David tells his son, He'll never fail thee. He'll never fail you. You know, even when we fail God, he won't fail us. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. Yes. Amen. Even when we go wrong, he'll still lead us right. Yes. Psalms 89 and 1. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. With my mouth, I will make known thy faithfulness to all generations. Yes. Amen. Yes. Uh, the psalmist said, I'm going to sing of God's mercy. You know, it's of the mercy of the Lord that we all hear. Amen. Amen. I mean, you know, you know, uh, you know, after all, you know, human nature, the flesh, you know, the flesh say you are. <laughs> that, that's, that's why we got to get in the spirit because the flesh is, uh, you know, the flesh will make you a legend in your own mind, not in your own time. We know a lot of those people, they're a legend in their own mind. You know, you, you talk to some guys, you would think they was next to Michael Jordan. They start talking about their basketball career, come to find out they didn't even play in high school. Didn't, didn't even play in middle school. All they was was down the street, down around the corner. But you hear them talking, you know, they, they, they had more points than Michael Jordan. They kind of, you know, they got number 23 on their jerkway. Don't, don't take it off. But it's just a legend in their own mind. Right, right, right. You know, the, the flesh always wants to puff us up. But, you know, it's the mercy of God while we're here. It's the goodness of God while we're here. Amen? It's the graciousness of God that we hear. Amen? And when you lean on that and you say, Lord, I know you're not 
I'm going to let me fail. I, I know my day of restoration is coming. I know you're going to restore to me the years of the locust and the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm. Amen. I know you're going to do exceedingly abundantly above all I could ask or think. And I'm trusting you. Now you're going to get a lift. Now the winds are coming. Amen. What the scriptures say, be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord. Depart from evil. It's health to your navel and marrow to your bones. Amen. Amen. The word of God is life to them that find it and medicine to all their flesh. Deuteronomy 7 and 9. Now know, now therefore, know therefore that the Lord thy God he is God, the faithful God, which keeps covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. First yeah. Corinthians 1 9. God is faithful by whom ye were called unto the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And so we said that, you know, uh, understand that God is not going to let you fail. So say that with me. Say, God is not going to let me fail. God is not Come on, let say it again. Fail. God is not going to let me fail. God is not going to let me fail. Even in affliction. Even in affliction. I'm expecting. I'm expecting. His hand of deliverance. His hand of deliverance. To perform for me. To perform for me. He's not going to let you fail. You might, be, you, might, you might be bending right now. You might be down, but you're not out. So don't let the devil take you out. And don't be walking around about I've been depressed for I've been depressed a long time. And wonder where your friends are. Nobody wanna hear that. I just, just be straight with y'all. Some of y'all where my friends at? They don't wanna hear that. I've been in the church all these years. My pastor told my prosperity. I ain't got no prosperity. Matter of fact, I, I don't even know what he talked about. I, it's true. But you got to get in so it can get in you. Yeah. Yeah. Then, 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 then you got to get around, you got to get away from people who don't believe. That's right. That's right. Some Christians, all their friends is unsaved. How you going to get some good counsel? Girl, you sick, girl, you sick. Ooh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, my auntie used to look like that. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what they look, that's what they, that's what they look. So you're trying to tell yourself you heal and your girlfriend telling you you're sick. Jesus. And that's what her aunt looked like for sure before she died. Jesus. Ooh, yeah, that, that's what Aunt Kate looked like. Uh -huh. Yeah, first year I was at an age, and she couldn't talk right, and she was slurring in the feet. And you looked up, she was going. You can't be around that. You can't be around that. <laughs> Psalms 34, 7 to 10. The angel of the Lord encamps round about them that fear him yeah. and delivers them. Yeah. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. Oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no one to them that fear him. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Psalms 34, 17 to 19. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth, and delivereth them out of all their trouble. The Lord is nigh, the Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and say to such as be of a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth them out of them all. Somebody say all. all. Say all again. All. Say I am delivered. I am delivered out of all affliction. Out of all afflictions. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Somebody say the Lord won't let me fail. 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 I'm coming out. I'm coming out. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Now I'm going to have to close with this because it's my time. <laughs> Know this, this is prophetic. A new door with new increase has opened for you to go through. Jesus. It is a last day prophecy out of the book of Haggai 
that God would shake everything that could be shaken and that newfound increase would be coming into the church. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to say it in a way you can understand it even better. The word of the Lord says in the last days, you can tell us the last days. Yes, Lord. You can tell us the last days. The Bible says wars, rumors of wars, earthquakes, all manner of floods. You know, we're there now. Men will be lovers of themselves, proud, boaster, you know, you know, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, without natural affection. You know, we are in the last days. But this is what the word of God says that uh, in Haggai chapter 2, verses 6 to 8, For thus says the Lord of hosts, Yet once it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens, and the earth, and the sea, and the dry land, and I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come, and I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine, and the gold is mine, says the Lord. You know, God is saying that in this last day, I will shake everything and I will pour money in my church. I will give money to my people. He said, I will fill this house with glory. And he said, but by the way, the silver and the gold is mine. And it's all mine. I don't care who you know, who's rich. God said, it's all mine. He said, and I'm going to shake it up. In this last day, he said, and I'm going to pour out on my people the silver and the gold. Hey, hey. Amen. Somebody say, do it, God. Do it, God. Ah! Hey, do it. Somebody say, do it now, God. Do it now, God. Somebody say, I believe I receive. I believe I receive. Somebody say, it's mine. It's mine. Now, come on now. If, if, if somebody who don't know the Lord can wander into a hotel and pull the lever and money come all out, surely God can blow on you. Yay! If somebody can scratch something off and win the lottery, on, surely God can blow on you. Hey! Jesus! Huh? Hallelujah! They said that, <laughs> they said, I have my neighbor from Willow Grove. Uh, he was down up here at the Lincoln Center. I said, Peter, what you doing now? He said, the lottery game. He said, the, the, the lottery. You didn't know the lottery number? I said, I know. He came all the way from Willow Grove to Delaware <laughs> for a particular lottery. <laughs> but you know what? God got increased for you. Yeah, that's right. Amen. Amen. He got increased for you. Amen. But you got to get in this so we can get in you. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Remember, there's a door that's open. Yes. It's a door of increase. Mm -hmm. And God wants you to go through it. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. He wants you to live. Hallelujah. He wants you to be blessed. Thank you, Lord. And you know what? I'm, I'm going to tell you this. My brother's here. He knows this for a fact. You know, I started preaching this when I had nothing. Mm -hmm. And I was praying with this blind lady, one of my mom's friends, and she used to say, get a victory for yourself, Lord. And Keith used to say, get a victory for yourself. <laughs> you, know, I, you know, I was doing the Lord. I just said what she said. Lord, get a victory for yourself. But I was getting mentored well. That's right. That's right. Amen. By people who believe. Yes. And for, for, for people who started from the bottom, but was working their way up. That's right. Amen. God wants you well. He wants you to increase. Yeah. You got to get that through your mind. And if you came from a church like I did that didn't preach that, my pastor said, there's the have and the have not, and don't you be jealous. Right. He preached that thing. He's like, <laughs> somebody come up in a cat match and you got a Volkswagen, give God praise anyway. Yeah. And that is true. But God got more for you. That's right. That's right. And if you broke today, amen, you can increase tomorrow because God got more for you. Because as far as God is concerned, all his children are blessed. Yes, that's right. Amen. Yes. And he said, I'll bless you coming in. I'll bless you going out. I bless you lying down. I bless you getting up. I bless you in the city. I bless you in the field. No matter where you are, God's got increase for you. It is the will of God 
that you prosper and be in hell. It is the will of God that you make the word your own. You start reading your Bible and you start participating. Amen? And what the word says to do. Amen? And then and you just continue to let it marinate in you and just saturate you. And you, there will be a lifting up. The bands of depression will leave your mind. The, the, the bands of, you know, uh, the, 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 you know, some people so vindictive and, you know, a lot of Christians, I'm going to say this, a lot of Christians don't get blessed because they don't know how to treat each other. Jesus. We mean to each other and wonder where our blessing is. The world see you down, we say buy your drink, but We see each other down. That's what she get when it comes to the I saw it. <laughs> she had the liquor store every Friday. I said, she picked up. I said, put a little hat on her head. I said, <laughs> what? 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 What is that your business? Yeah, that ain't your business. That's right. If you were in her circumstances, you probably wouldn't have made it to the liquor store. You'd be in the bed. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. I'm just saying. You know, we criticize people don't know what they're going through. You buy yourself and you barely make it. She got eight kids. Jesus. Huh? I mean, so we got enough. When you really want to be blessed, start treating your brothers and sisters better. Hey! That's the word. Jesus. All those heathens on your job, you treat them better. If you come to church, somebody don't like you. <laughs> I purposely didn't speak to her. She don't deserve to be spoken. Well, okay. Now you delaying your blessing. Yeah. Jesus. You know? And you think because you don't smoke, you don't sex, you don't do this, you don't do that. Yeah. Where your blessing at? You, that's an attitude thing. If you can check all those things yeah. and you still lack it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's in the mouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember yeah, yeah, yeah. the doctor's open, open your mouth up. Remember that? Yeah, that little popsicle stick on that. <laughs> you know, and you thinking you should be blessed and it's taking you too long, check your mouth. Hallelujah. We treat each other terrible. Talk and talk about each other soon. Can't even get in the car. That was glory. You know glory. That was ain't no glory on glory. You just up there knocking. I couldn't wait to get out of church. And the Holy Spirit is like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you're gonna keep to you to wait. Yeah. Like glory and re all, all the trials and tribulation and somebody in God gonna ruin your day. Jesus. Lord have mercy. Well my time been up. <laughs> I better stop I'll get the method now. <laughs> method spirit. I never forget I was this is a true story. I, I was an evangelist and I was preaching at this one church. And I, I got on this one thing, and the man about six foot three said, go on, go on. And I was like, what is he talking about? So after I was finished preaching, he said, Reverend, you were stepping on my toes. So I, had, I was telling you to go on. And you get on. <laughs> I said, God, I wasn't trying to step on your toes, but I didn't, you know, I'm new here. I'm a visitor. He said, go on, go on. <laughs> I guess I feel some of y'all telling me, go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. You get off that stuff. Yeah. Jesus. I, I tried to tell her off this morning for you. <laughs> and I'm not sorry she's not here. <laughs> and the word of God says, and be ye kind Why one to another. another. Tender hearted. Yeah. Forgiving one another. Yeah. Even as God. Yeah. For Christ's sake. Yeah. Have forgiven you. Yes, Amen. Amen. And Jesus said, they'll know, they'll know we are true Christians yes. by the way we love one another. Yes. Amen? Amen? So I have love for your brothers and sisters. Yes. Amen? Amen. And, and don't criticize. You don't know what's going on. Yes. Don't know what's going on. Amen? Yes. There might be trouble that you've never seen. Oh my God. They might be going through something you could even never even fathom. Yes, God. Thank you, Lord. But God is faithful. He will not fail you. He will not fail you. 
I don't know where you are today, but he will not fail you. Amen. Let him in your boat. When trouble comes, don't run away from God. Run to God. Amen. And everything is going to be all right. I thank you for your time. I thank you for your uh, participation. You know, it's hard to preach when the congregation's not participating. Amen. When everybody's participating, it makes it easier. It makes it easier for the word of the Lord to go forth. Amen. Amen. The Apostle Paul told the church at Corinth, he said his greatest fear was that they would deviate from the simplicity of the gospel. I'm not trying to preach to you anything hard, anything for you hard to understand. The Bible says that this thing is simple enough for a fool to understand. That's right. In the simplicity of your faith, you'll find great victory. Amen. amen. In the simplicity of your faith, amen, you'll find yourself ever increasing and ever multiplying. Amen. amen. So rest in the Lord today, no matter where you are. Remember, condemnation is not of God. If you've been feeling guilty about things, put that under your feet. Amen. Because God's will, amen, is that you go forward. Healing belongs to you. Thank you. Amen. Blessing belongs to you. Thank you, Lord. And there is a lifting up. Yes. Amen. Yes. There is a lifting up. Let's give God some praise. Hallelujah. Let's give God some praise. Hallelujah. I don't say clap for me. Let's give God some praise. Let's just stand on our feet. Stand on your feet right now. Stand on your feet right now. If you would just stand on your feet right now and greet two or three people. Three, two or three people. Just, just them. I'm glad you're here this morning.